So Jeremy, another feature that a lot of people like, I know, in GNS3 version 2.2 and later, is these like pretty symbols. Yes, uh, affi affinity symbols, as we call them. Yeah. Affinity. So w what is that about? Uh, this is a contribution from uh, one of our users. Uh, they're basically uh, pretty icons, pretty symbols uh, for your GNS3 projects. Yeah, so I mean, this is a great example for everyone who's watching. You know, the great thing about Genus 3 and the, and the community is, you know, you can contribute and, and make a change. So I can't remember the, the, the guy's name who did it, but someone contributed symbols on GitHub. And now we, everyone can benefit from that because he made it open source, didn't he? Yes. So anyone can use that. So now that's been integrated into... Into version 2.2, yes. Two from full version 2.2. And later, great. Um, so I'll probably show you that in a separate video because it's easier to demonstrate it. But just in brief, you can right click on a device yes. in your workspace and then you can change the, the symbol. Or you the can change icon. the symbol, you will see the affinity uh, symbol there. So it's built right in. Yes, it's built in. You yeah. can also do it when you do templates, yeah? You can also do it when you do templates. So you import a, when, you, when you import a new template. When you, yes, you, when you create a new template, you import an uh, appliance file. Uh, and it will, uh, depending on what you choose in the preference, it will uh, include the affinity symbol. And you can change the symbols on the what is on the left hand side. You can change the symbols of, of the devices that you've already. Yeah, got. on the templates you already created. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's like three places where you can do it. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so that's a great, um, a great change. I'm just looking through my list here. Another one that I really like is cloud consoles. So what is that about? So cloud console is um, so you can take a cloud node yep. and map it to a physical device you have anywhere in in your network on the uh, on internet. So if I've got GNS3 running, let's say on my PC here, and I'm connected to a physical network, so I've got a switch, let's say switch one, and here I've got a router one, and I'll just draw a really bad topology, but let's say I've got a few bunch of routers here. You saying that I can build a GNS3 topology here with cloud nodes. Yes. So it has to be a cloud node, yeah? It has to be a cloud node, cloud node but you can change a symbol, you can customize it. So basically, I could draw a topology of my physical network yes. in GNS3, change the symbol to router switch, whatever I want, and then when I click on that, mm, like it, I would do... It will it, open a console. So it'll open up a console from my PC using, let's say, Telnet or SSH It can or be Telnet, uh, it can be uh, HTTP, so yep. web. It uh, can be a VNC. VNC, so I could have, go to a physical server here somewhere. Yes. And they would do a VNC to that, yeah? Yeah. And I could be HTTPS. It uh, could be HTTPS as well. And like SSH, yeah? Uh, SSH, I don't think we, we support it yet, but that's, that's a good idea to, to Do include. it for later, yeah? Yes. So, I mean, the great advantage here is that you can have both GNS3 virtual devices. So, you could have an iOS V device here. Um, connected to your cloud. To connect it to the cloud. Which or like a NAT or a NAT oh, yeah. device. Yes. Yeah. So, like NAT or something to the physical network, and sorry, you were saying? And uh, yes, you can just, um, so you connect it to your cloud, and your cloud can represent any physical device. So I like to, I mean, this is not the official line, it's just me, like as an analogy, I like to say this is the Visio replacement kind of thing. Yes, it's like a simple Visio uh, where you can create a, a network. It's funny, because I mean, a lot of people have asked me, David, how do you draw your topologies? And I actually use GNS3 for a lot of my topologies because with the affinity symbols, the new symbols, um, and the fact that you can, I don't know if people are aware of this, you can snap devices to the grid in yeah. GNS3. Yeah, we have a grid, uh, grid support. Yeah, so I mean, you can, you can have a grid in GNS3 and you can snap the devices to the grid and then get them all aligned very nicely. So as you move it, it snaps to the grid. And then when, you, when, you, when you're ready, you can, there's an option where you can say unsnap from the, from the grid, but they all align nicely. But this takes it a step further where I can actually click on the devices and access physical devices my network. Is that right? From GNS3, yes. From directly from within GNS3. So both virtual devices or physical networks, sorry, physical devices my network can all be linked 
in a pretty network diagram, but also it's a live diagram. Yes. Where you can connect directly to devices, yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so let's let's go to the next one. What about 2.3 or, or later? What are your plans for the future? So long-term plans. Uh, first one uh, will be to how to deploy Gen3 in the cloud. Any cloud provider uh, could be uh, a Google Cloud, could be Azure, uh, could be Packet.net. So how do how do we create like multiple server? Each server has a Gen3 uh, server process running uh, in it. Yep. Uh, so how do we make this easier for our users? Okay, so that's not GNS3 hosting the VM for users, is it? It's just making it easier to deploy in a cloud provider. Yes, yeah, just it's up to our users to provide uh, their account or yeah. subscription for providers. Uh, we just provide a way to to deploy Gen3 in the in the in the cloud environment. So you'd write, run like a script or like, something. Like a script or that something. Does something. Yeah. Okay, great. What are, what are, what other things have you got on the roadmap? So we want to to add a user management layer. Okay, so that, that's like permissions, is it? It's like permissions, uh, like also resource uh, limitations, like. Oh, um, that's a big one, yeah. How much uh, memory or how much CPU? a user can use uh, from a GNS3 server? Okay, so at the moment, in GNS3, I can have a GNS3 VM, and I could be sharing a topology with someone. Yeah. Yep. So whatever I update, they can see. But this takes it a step further, because if I started up 50 nodes, it would consume all the CPU, perhaps, and all the memory of the GNS3 server running in an ESXi server or something. Then other users have no, no more resources to to run their, their projects. But the idea long-term is that, let's say I as an instructor with a class mm -hmm. could say every student only gets 10% or whatever I decide. Like, yes, 10% like that, that much CPU power, uh, like, yes. Memory, that Me kind of thing. Yeah. But this is, this is once again on the roadmap. This is not here. This is what you're planning to do. Yes. So again, when you depending on when you're watching this, this may be available or not. Um, we're recording this in August 2019, but this is more long-term, yeah? Yeah. Okay, Jeremy, so that's the long-term plans. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we'll see that coming. But if anyone wants to give suggestions of, you know, things that could be improved in GNS3, what should they do? Uh, they should go on the gns3.com website. Yep in the community section, and then you can post their ideas there. Like in the community, like the, the, the forum type area? Like yeah. the forum, yes. And then they can just post ideas there, and you'll see that. Um, and then that could be put on a list that you decide, yeah? Yeah. Great. Yeah.